Welcome in to episode 35 where we're going to put the engine back together. 34 saw that heater box rebuild and parts 1, I think 2 and 3 as well, some wiper motor rebuild stuff. And now it's time, we've got a very nice engine, rebuilt or most of it redone, completely overhauled block, short block, crank, pistons, block finished in very nicely if you can see the water jacket there and everything all cleaned out so a short block ready for us to put back together pistons and everything all replaced gem engines did this can we get in and just see how clean how clean we are so we are in good order here with this block completely refurbed and rebuilt including as well over this side onto the assembly bench including the head which is prepared ready again with a similar treatment cleaned acid dipped cleaned then all the relevant parts replaced springs fitted ready to take the, the higher lift cam higher lift cam just at the back so we're going to build this the same way we built Ruby's engine up before we start we've got some parts to clean the Nerta degreaser slightly got the edge over gunk and geyser just cuts that little bit sharper um, really good stuff from the Wipex boys so we're just cleaning these plates now these uh, you've got your auxiliary drive shaft coloured plate you've got your front poly plate all ready to go we just need to get the degreaser on the go get in here and then we'll wash these down so you're going to leave that with me as we prep these bits for the engine so clean those two items up get the bench ready and start putting in we need to put on the oil pump we need to put on, put on the oil pickup pipe uh, I think that's about it for this end then get the sump bolted on to there and we can flip the engine round put the head on not a lot really to do Pinto's information's out there plenty of people do them the bread and butter there's not much I'm going to cover on this simply because there's so much info out there on these and uh, we'll just do an, an overview of us, of us building it up so not a lot of mega amount of footage really I'm not sufficiently knowledgeable on engines to go any further than just reassembling it the machining work I'll leave that to specialists some of you out there can do it and I respect the engine builders it's just something which uh, I wasn't confident with I prefer to outsource I mean I couldn't uh, skim machine and acid dip a block to this standard I could take the, the uh, head around to different places I could take the block around and get engineering companies to help out but I just decided to do it all in house with one firm gem so we use gem and I'll just do the uh, the bolt together bit the easy bit okay so gonna clean them up now we're gonna put the oil pump on and start putting the sump on the engine and we can flip it around get the cylinder head on See in a sec. Engine build then, away we go, we're all laid out. Step back, again we do the obligatory step back so you can get an idea. We've got an assembly bench over there, all sorts of goodies underneath waiting in the wings on our Clark bench, quite a handy bench. Full of stuff that we've been preparing, ready to do. All the camp, Kent Cam, very camp, very camp, Kent Cam followers, gasket sets, all sorts of things new tension of pulleys gaskets for everything as much stuff as we could think a new dipstick all sorts to get the engine looking tip top a new thermostat housing there inlet manifold coated all sorts you'll see all this come together at Cortina City as we put the engine together for project Bramble Bramble's engine then looking smart looking clean ready to receive some treatment but for now it's a little bit of degreasing with an to degreaser. Okay, our degreasing situation is going very good. Go on, my son, just look at that. Nerd to cut through the grease in the grime. Every time. Yeah. We're really moving. We're really motoring. A lot of gunk and grease 
was on these but I'm gonna say this has got a very nice whoa whoa <laughs> this has got a very nice tangy zesty smell to it it seems to be citrus based I recognize the the fresh fragrance of orange and lime groves growing in a wild Mediterranean vista of fun lemons and limes doing it every time yeah let's get these clean so these are our front plates on the front of the engine here there's a name for these but I don't know anything about engines there's a seal there we'll be replacing that this is the front sprocket cover and this is the auxiliary drive cover both needed to be clean we'll put a little bit of HT matte silver over them just to brighten them up now you'll see there are some stubborn deposits there that the nurse just can't quite get through but the majority of the gunk has gone we used a, a stiff brush this is a, actually a seam sealing brush which is ideal for a job like this so we won't get away without pressure washing them so we're going to use the Karsha pressure washer on these just to finish them off so two plates that's the only mucky thing really that we've got to do on this build other than the pickup pipe which we'll do separately because we want to make sure that's uber clean and then the mucky bit is out of the way so what we need to do now folks is get this across to the pressure washer I'm going to put them in like a basket so it doesn't fill up with water and just blast the pressure washer onto these we'll give them a quick dusting of silver we don't want it oh my god silver we just want an aluminium look don't want to go too far just a slight little touch just a little one two buckle my shoe now the nerd has done its job the super degreaser so if you want to get some of this in your collection of goodies why not Nerta N-E-R-T-A car and truck super degreaser I got mine from Wipex supplies in Bursco but uh, other suppliers are available and that's just a little bit sharper I think than the, the, the geyser but to be fair geyser's good stuff too that's another degreaser and I say there are other degreasers don't use solvents this has got no um, fumes coming off it's pleasant to work with I'm hoping it dissolves in water I think it says it's water washable down I'm gonna pour this away into an, um, a separate container anyway just in case it's not biodegradable I don't want to take that risk I'm looking to see what we get in terms of whether it's it does say it's uh, acidic there so I've got I have got glasses on there's only splashes so this to be fair well to be fair sorry I've had I have had glasses on okay um, just to be on the safe side let's get the power washer out buy yourself some if you're doing this job in a little basket thinner's brush it's nice and stiff and then we can get these power wash down you'll see me jump straight to some very nice clean parts see you in a sec okay we're doing good I've not jet washed down the oil pickup we've only degreased that we're going to use compressed air to finish it off I don't want to introduce water for obvious reasons into this pickup pipe so just uh, a basic clean up for that one these ones power wash back down and you can see we've got most of it there's some dark patches in the aluminium burned into it they're not going to come off so that's about the best you can get in a degreaser can't actually remove those burned in stains into the castings into the into the alloy so you, the best you're going to get there isn't anything loose or grease greasy on there and now I'm using a just a solvent just to actually finally degrease the surface because I'm just going to touch these in with a little bit of oh my god silver just to give them some uniform uni uniformity I'll leave the seals in then the paint doesn't create an interference with the seal and then I'll pop the seals out once they've dry so I'm just going to tidy them up a little bit just a little bit of silver as close as I can get. So 
obviously nothing to do to the pickup pipe just to blow some air gently through that and clear the gauze out make sure that gauze pickup gauze is clear and then that's it for those items that's the the muckiest part will be done so clean these up now a little bit of paint a bit of compressed air okay cleaned up and new seals fitted into those out of our pack we're using an L uh, L ring gasket pack so there's plenty more gaskets to be used in there for the rest of the jobs but for now we've tapped in new seals into these they're clean don't want to go too crazy clean on these i'd say we'll just give them a, a quick dusting and just sort of like matted it in it's just a matte silver high temp paint pretty tough so that's that it's a little bit cleaner more presentable Just checking you're still recording. Sometimes I can't see that record like yes you are. Right, uh, the oil pickup pipe is cleaned out. We've blown it out with compressed air. Don't know where it's gone, but it's around somewhere. Knocked out the old seals, don't need those anymore. We've got an oil pump now to do. Let's have a look at the oil pump. They're alright for later on. Two oil pumps to pick from. One's a high pressure oil pump, I believe. One's the original one so we're just gonna have a look manual says check with feeler gauges for clearances this one's brand new it's done nothing at all so I'll probably pick this brand new one well I'm sure there's nothing wrong with this however we've got that so doesn't have a gasket curiously that slots on there's a little keyway there on the underside of the engine block I'll show you that in a minute two bolts to hold on the pickup pipe and a pickup gasket so I'm gonna clean that face although it looks already clean to me don't want to get any um, muck in this let's have a look no that doesn't need cleaning because it's a brand new pump it went on to Ruby's original engine that got ripped off because they didn't build the engine properly but they did fit this they owe me money as well they owe me 600 quid hope you, if you're watching you can pay that back thanks very much so that needs the gasket that presuming the gasket for that's going to be in here can't see oh there it is that'll be it there a blade to open this there's our pickup gasket there but i think so we can bolt that onto the get this onto the engine now I'll take you across to the engine because we're done on the bench just for now across to the engine folks let's go okay oil pump two to splines there's two spline bolts here you've got to use to get in this tool don't ask me where I got it I have absolutely no idea at all but you could get that spline Torx type <clears throat> I'll tell you what it is it is if you're doing your oil pump it's an M8 but normal socket size won't quite get in to do the oil pump I mean I didn't know this I'm learning today by the way so I've never fitted an oil pump. They want it at 15 foot pounds. So we're just gonna one click there. We're set at 15. A little bit more for that one. And that's the oil pump in using this spline adapter because you've got to get just in there. So that's that oil pump on. Now we can get the little gasket and then the pickup pipe just goes in nothing really to it no special lubricants or anything really required I'll, I'll lightly oil the gasket a little touch of engine oil on the gasket then put some in a jar ready to use just a little bit just a little bit of oil on that can't do any harm at all stops it going sticky sticky and then coming back into your screens now ladies and gentlemen let's just hope that i'm doing this right no doubt i'll be told told off if i'm not we've got two of those bad boys to go one special bolt for here that goes in there a little bit of loctite on that one i don't 
don't want that one. Comes in that's at 15 as well. I'm just thread locking these. I don't want this coming off. It's an engine fail if this one comes off, but we talk that up. It should never come off. That one there. That one goes there, that one goes there. Get this. I've got one more to get in. A little bit at a time. Carry on. I'm going to tighten that up. One on there. Making sure you can still see. So, pick up. Oil pump. There's a hex shaft that drops in from the other side that actually rotates the pump because it's driven off the auxiliary shaft there. Then we can clean this space, although it is clean and ready to receive the gasket, it just wants degreasing. There's a plate to fit now. Remember we did those. This can go on like so. A little bit of oil just in there to help it slide onto here so not to chafe the rubber. That lines up. Then a straight edge along here before we lock this plate in position, getting ready to fit the sump itself. A gasket at the end, some little key stone things to put in for the gaskets. Then a sequence to tighten up the bolts on the pan. I think you're starting in opposite corners and going round. We need to dig out the bolts now for this. Sumps in the wings just over there off screen and put it together. little bit of uh, gasket sealer on there and a gasket behind, you see the gasket coming in and of course we've got to get it to sit flush on the block do a little new special and you can see that it isn't straight so just Bring that up a touch. Like this. And just there. Actually won't go exactly how you want it. Now we try, might try and rotate it a little bit, let's just see. Let me keep going. Crazy radio station. It's, I've got Radio 6 music on and I don't have to play some weird stuff. But I guess there's a certain advert that's running at the moment that's driving me wild. I can't stand it. It's some kind of crazy singer. He's worse than Michael Bublé. He's more annoying than Jordan. I forget his name. Louis Bloody Capaldi. Oh my god, I can't stand that man. I love his singing. Not that I'd listen to it, but there's an advert on. It's driving me mad. Okay, that's that. We've got one, that plate that we prepared earlier to go on there. I only put a little bit of blue on. A little bit of blue. Ah, let me just 
Oil up this seal, this end seal. Okay, there we go. Oh, oh, my brand. No, that doesn't sound like Kenneth Williams at all. That's a useless Kenneth Williams impression. I can't do Kenneth Williams. Can you? Had all the bolts ready and galved. You can just buy these off the shelf. Just do these by hand, feel these by hand, no need to talk them. Probably, probably about 15 foot pounds, maybe. 10, 15. That's that cover, that's that cover. We do the water pump if we want it. But we'll do the sump next. Okay, these are the end, the end seals. So the grooves in them, they just drop in. You feel them click in. I know a lot of you would have done this. So popular Pinto building. And of course, I'm way open for critique. I won't profess to be an expert on this. But we'll learn as we go. Let's not hope we learn the hard way. When it's too late to rectify anything. Little recesses for the little lugs just on the ends of these gaskets there those lugs fit underneath the little recesses in those end seals rubbers both ends front and back of the crank little slots together no gasket sealer on this face but on the sump side we do use a sealant now this is following the instruction book it asks you not to holymar gasket seal this side I just grease it Pop that in, <clears throat> and that side is ready. There are some little wedges we're going to work out where they go because I know people will pick up on those wedges. It comes with these little rubber wedges, and I've forgotten where they go. I'll remember shortly, I'm sure. Not much commentary, I'm thinking, as I go. Radio 1 in the background, Radio 6 has its moments, but on the whole it's a, a pretty disjointed affair. <clears throat> With the, <clears throat> the majority being quite annoying 
music, quite pretentious and annoying music I found, but that's just me. Planet Rock is okay, but we've got problems with Planet Rock at the moment. Annoying advert time. There was a period when quite, I was quite enjoying the Planet Rock adverts, but at the moment they've got this... Uh, I wish I could swear, I really wish I could swear. They've got this Lewis Capaldi, and he's got a voice that he just sounds like he's being strangled in a vice. He is goddamn awful. I need to try and be smart, and it's an advert for something. I think it's for rollover minutes for a mobile phone company. I possibly I can't remember, but it's that bad that I nearly want to smash the radio up. <laughs> okay, I'm staying nice and calm. Today. There's no man here today. <laughs> Woo! There is man here today. Right, I, it's going on. Where did the wedges go? Please tell me. Please help me. Where did the little rubber wedges go? Here they are. Where did they go? We know this has got something to do with this. Jim, where are you when I need you? Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Yeah. Where did these wedges go? Go on, my son. Go on, my son. Where do they go? In the end, I'm, 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 I'm sure of it. <laughs> Here's the song coming to your screens now. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Hmm. Is there a hole in the sump for the wedges to fit? No. I'm going to have to research. I know they go somewhere. Clarkson, do you know? Jeremy, give us that. Jeremy, where does it fit? Clarkson. Clarkson. Clarkson! We'll find out. Okay, thank you, Internet. Wedges just in here, the end bearing cap, in they go like that. You can see why they work like that. One and two, and guess what? I've lost one already. <laughs> in they go. So now we can put that back on. So they go on before the actual rubber end seal. You live and learn, as I said, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. It's good fun though. Okay, coming to your screens, the sump itself ready to rock. And now over we go. I don't think there's anything else for us to do. We're all done inside there. Sump goes on, gaskets all in, wedges in position. A little bit of blue high high low mar, a blue high low mar on the face and now our tightening sequence begins. I'll just start some bolts off. I won't tighten them at all. These were the new bolts I had galvanised. I didn't put the washers in though. I don't know why I didn't do that. Somehow the washers escaped. That's naughty. That's very bad. That's just ridiculous. Just not good. The noise in the background is the PC fan booting in because I'm using the internet to play my music at the moment because of that advert we've told you about that's driving Cortina City crazy. So now you know our Achilles heel revealed the Achilles heel. Lots of these to put on. A very satisfying feeling it is to to carry on building this up. Leave this with me now as we do the tightening sequence starting in opposite corners. Okay, here we go.
sump floor, then new sump gasket, sump club gasket, just nip up. That is it. Okay, let's spin this round. I think now, nothing to stop us. Sneak past the camera. look at on this side that one's taking off well, I thought they're screwing on with only stuff getting in there now hex bar to go in for the distributor shaft to turn the oil pump then we're ready I can put the head on as well so we'll do that next let's get that fully spun round okay head gasket an L-ring head gasket going on now for my these are guide bolts to help the head slide on Please tell me I'm doing this right. <laughs> I, hope I hope I'm doing this right. It's good fun, isn't it? Engine building. Nice and clean, brand new. Everything all, uh, whatever they do to an engine. Uh, honed machined, oversized, nice pistons, what they call these pistons, H23B, we've got a mark, a manufacturer, you'll know, I'll zoom in on later on, but we're ready to put the head on now, nothing to stop that, I've done, I've, I have put, I have changed quite a few cylinder heads, so, and they've never gone wrong, so, um, yeah, it's all packaged and over the, on the bench over there, I'll show you. Rare use of the zoom. It's very nicely packaged up. Too nice to open, really. But let's get it open. Let's get it on. Back you go to there. Up you go now. We rise you. Well, before we go back on the, the pod, let's unwrap and have a look what we got. Oh, yeah. Go on, my son. Look at that. Oh! Very nice. Right, let's lift this over. One cylinder head. These springs are um, shorter for the FR30 cam, so you don't get any binding. Because the slightly higher lobes on the FR30. There's the cam over there. So it's a high torque cam, ideally suited for automatic transmission. Just gets that torque converter up and going at low revs. So to stop the uh, spring bind, we reduce the height of these. No need to machine out the face on this type. You could guess, get away with just changing the springs themselves. New shells in there. What can I say? But it's a beast of a unit. All machined. And nothing to stop us putting that on. Quite a, a big occasion. Looking for, been looking forward to doing this for quite some time now. But of course, we had to get all the electrics and um, subunits out of the way before we could get on and do something as exciting as this engine build. Okay, lifting across, tripod for you. Weight training for me. Before we go on, an underside view. You won't be seeing it again. Beautiful job by Gem. Okay, now let's lift it on.
think that's it for our head bolts, our L-ring head bolts. We need to check out the guide ones now. Hold on while I grab the necessary. I've got these little guide bolts, they make life a hell of a lot easier. Can you still, are you still on? Yeah, you're still on. But we need to take them out. He says. Magnet might be not quite powerful to do it. I would have thought that, that magnet would have. Oh, yeah, I knew it would. Right, of course it will. You can make these guide bolts, just use old head bolts, grind them off. They make life much easier. What I'll do, I'll work from this side, it's going to be better for your your viewing experience, of course, you've got to think of the, think of the camera. Right, guide bolts have now done their job. I'm just wetting the end of each thread, that's all. Even though they've probably got a coating on these to account for this, but just in case. Right, so I need my star drive now, my Torx bit to tighten them up, but obviously in the right sequence and with the um, spanner, the uh, torque wrench. So, that bit's on, get them just nipped up nicely for now, then we're, we're safe and secure. So let's go and get me star drive, torx bit, and we'll do that. I've got most of the Ford specialist tools, luckily, we've acquired over the years. Okay, a T55 bit gets it. So, there is a sequence of tightening this, but I ain't doing it yet. I'm just going to get them in position. It's sort of like these two first, one, two. Three there. Four down here. I'm looking at the book. Five in front of it. Six up the bottom end. Corner. Seven opposite. Eight bottom corner left. Nine in front. For a bolt. Now one shot. That head ain't going to escape anywhere now. This one. Ten there. So now we're safe for today, we'll finish here for tonight, knowing we've got uh, good progress made today. So I'll catch you in a, for me, it's 24 hours for you, just a few seconds away. Okay. Okay, here we go. We've got a sprocket on now. It's auxiliary drive sprocket. And that's turning the distributor there because it's all linked together. The hex bar, I mentioned earlier on about the hex bar, it's already on the pump um, sticking up inside it. I, I thought you dropped it in, you don't, it's already on the pump. Try to drop a hex bar and there's already a hex bar in there. Do never mind. Live in there. That drives the distributor, it also drives the pump. It's driven by the cam belt itself. So we've got that, these nipping up, we've got a a bolt that goes on there, it's a fine threaded bolt, washer on, that slides on nicely. The flat face pointing out according to the book. Sprocket here, lower sprocket, the, um, the flat face points outwards, there's a standoff ridge on it. 
that knocks in, I've put some grease on there. That little guide washer then goes on. We don't put the pulling wheel on yet. We've got power steering, so that means you get this um, anti-vibration kind of like wheel. It's got a rubber insulator on it <clears throat> for running power steering. Twin, twin pulley there. Okay, we've got, what else we got? What else have we got? The water pump. We've got the water pump, okay. Water pump is a 35 bolt there. We've got this guide bolt which helps hold the cover, the cam cover on. That's a long kind of stud. A little bit of a gasket sealer on for the water pump. We've got a 14 mil socket on that side, bolt. So we'll just nip up the pump now. I just get the pump on and out of the way. I've not gone for the cast iron pump. I, uh, I use these alloy pumps. I have got a proper genuine Ford cast pump, but it's not for me, it's for other people. Um, for concourse, it's not a concourse engine, it ain't a concourse pump. So, that's the water pump. Some pump. We're going to go round these, we mark them up that they all need talking exactly. Never had a problem with any water pump I've ever changed, ever leaking. No reason why anything should change. If this is right or wrong. A little bit of the blue squidging out. That might be room for improvement on that, perhaps, I suppose. You know, maybe uh, there's a technique for that, which I don't know about. However, I'd rather, I feel happier with a sealant on it because it's the water pump. Even though all the faces on the block are very straight and it is a new pump, I still want to put a bit of sealant on it. The choice is whether it's blue or red. Let me know what I've done wrong there. I say, not put that flywheel on. Cam cover, okay, that comes in. You've got these little standoff. We may as well nip them up, guys, girls, out there on YouTube and Patreon land. We may as well nip these up. 13s for those. 15, 14, 14. Guess I've just had a 13 and lost it. Me. 10. Everything but 13. You know, 19s, 17s, 13s. Where do they all go? 13. No fedlock needed for these. <laughs> no, 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 no. 14. Absolutely nothing to do with these. You'll see that I've got that spring on there. That's the tensioning spring. Which this should have been tightened up before that went on. Whoops! Before that went on. Spring uh, cam belt tensioner spring goes there. You've got a little mini Torx type end to uh, lock it. You put the, load the tension up by pushing back, locking that bolt on. Fit your belt. Release this bolt and it. The idea is it springs back. We got rid of the idea later on. Right, we've got a cam cover. Needs this little foam strip which will cut and fit. There's a little foam, sort of shaky pad type strip which goes around there. Very satisfying job fitting that. Cut up our neoprene foam and inlay it into that recess so it doesn't make a, a rattling sound. Two litre cam covers are different than 1600 ones because you've got a difference in height on the engine block. So we've got our two litre one. This has a lovely little plastic retaining clip which snaps into place here, which I've got. I'm going to dig that out and then it enables it to guide itself onto this bolt which is holding on the water pump. And then two securing bolts here going through two rubber um, washers which we fit in a minute. 
and then this fits in something like this slots onto that bolt so that would be your cam cover that's all kind of like landing there starts up like an engine so we need to dress this with some foam the anti-rattle foam pad and find its little locating tang here which slides it and guides it slides and guides onto this making that complete there well, obviously the cam cover won't be around for a long time but i'd like to just start putting all the pieces together so i know what i've got or more importantly what i haven't got okay we can prime the engine with oil if we want but before we do that we'll talk down the first stage of the heads we, we refer to the uh the diagram which comes with the bolts it gives us the tightening sequence easily available when you order your bolts uh, sorry comes when you order your bolts or easily available online one two three four for the uh, sequence and then the the newton meter force um then a final 90 degree depending on the type of bolt that you use there's two types i think the stretch and non stretch i think the non stretch are reusable the stretch are not reusable so depending on what type we've got now this is a victorine's sheet but we didn't use victorine's bolts we used aha here we are we used the l-ring ones so the l-ring ones give you the option this is where you get into engine building the engine building people know all about this so uh, I live and I learn. But here it is. Uh, option A or B, depending on what we've got, is depending on how you tighten them up. 15 minutes, 95 to 100 newton meters. On type B, you give it a 90 degree turn after five minutes. Here, after 15 minutes, this is the wait time. So you treat the bolts with a slightly different torque depending on what you've got. I've got type type B which is uh, I think one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got type B I think I think the seven. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. On type A the seven nodes on type b this the six nodes one two three four five six and then you can see on a one two three four five six seven count in mind just so i know what bolts i've got one two three four six so i've got type b which will require an initial turn 35 to 40 then a, a wait time 70 to 75 no sorry a second stage that's a second pass round so you first pass round at 35 40 your second pass round on your order at 70 to 75 waiting five minutes and a 90 degree turn to finish off on those tight bolts so we'll do it do that next just so that they're out of the way we can prime the engine with oil i'd like to get it some oil coming up into here and make sure the pump's running good before we go any further so with my torque wrench look on the newton meter setting set us up 35 to 40 first stage so 30 on there and then 5 so I'm now set on 35 okay and I just get my star drive which is hidden over here into the store as we go which is going to be I've got a specialist one um, I keep to one side there it is knew that I had it right so that's that extension bar you shouldn't use apparently because you lose torque in the extension bar well, how the hell do I get in there without an extension bar so don't use an extension bar on these because you get torque twist in the extension bar well how do I get in to there please is it a special extension bar that I use or should I just use the shortest possible one I can help me please, uh, it's too late, I've already done it, you're watching this film and the engine's probably running by now, lunatic, I mean it'll make some people cringe, it really will, oh, isn't he? no 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 no, he's behind you, he's behind you, you've done it all wrong you fool, oh dear, here we go, it's a shorter bar, 
on the floor. A new release switch on them. They seem to remember somebody telling me we'll go in there, yes, we come from this side. I must admit though, not really particularly happy about getting in that close. So 35 to 40, I'm already set. Ones for the ones. Where's the front of the engine? Why don't you tell me which is the front of the engine? Hmm. Well, according to the book, one and nine. Wow. Doesn't really tell you where the front is. Eight is the manifold side, so I'm on the right way. We're all going to adjust our angle now. You're coming in overhead. Right, according to our sheet, eight is the manifold side. Which means I'm manifold side stood here. Looking at the forward book, eight is the inlet manifold side. This is so confusing. <coughs> it does not show it the same in the book. Exhaust side. Doesn't make any sense this at all. 7 and 10, back of the engine, nope, totally different, totally different, don't know how to work this one out at all, which side is which, well I'll go off the Ford book, Seven. this top corner, So how do they work that out? It's crazy. It's a different sequence than what Ford say. Seven. Okay, one, start at one, go quick to 35 to 40. This is just the first stage, two is directly opposite. I'm remembering, ah, no, we forgot something guys, we forgot something. We want oil on the heads of these before we do anything, knock that back out. This is just because we want you to lubricate the heads of the bolts. It just gives you a more accurate torque setting. So. I'll just pop some oil down each one of these. Because these are only these are only on just to keep the head in place while we're messing with the other side of the engine. These are not tight at all. So we're going to put some oil on the heads of the bolt. For now. Now this is where an oil can would be handy. I, one thing I've not got is a little mini oil can. An instant like this, oil can would come in really, really, really handy. But I'll have to suffice. We're just pouring a little bit in. Would have been nice, wouldn't it? But it doesn't really matter now, everything can dribble down. Because of course, if you were replacing your head, these would be wet anyway. If the engine had been running, if you'd been, you know, if you're doing an upgrade to your engine or whatever, you'd never be doing these bolts dry. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. One, please. And don't hit the engine with your bar. Two's opposite. Where's three? 
freeze up here next to one. Four just down here. I'm going to check that you can see. Hold on while the screen jumps. I'm just making sure. Yeah, yeah. You're perfectly in shot there. And you don't worry about that. Four, where's five? Is in front of four. Now, the Ford book shows it different than the cylinder head ones. They're now showing. I know they're still on at six, but we seem to get the last two change in the Ford book compared to the, I'm going with the stunt manufacturer, six, seven now is nine on there, so they've swapped that. That's a curious one, so who's going to know the reason for that? How come in the uh, Ford workshop book it shows this as, as a nine, but in the instruction sheet with the bolt it shows this as a seven? Okay, I'm going with the books. Um, you would think you would go with a Ford one, but I'm not I'm going with the manufacturer of the bolts. So this is eight. Eight. Nine's in front, which is Ford's seven. It is a bit close, this short stubby bar, for my liking to that, the tower of the uh, cam. So a slightly longer bar would be better, but then they say, they're telling me that it you get torque twist in the bar. But I'd like to be just about up, up there. I suppose in the past that's how I've done it with this length bar. Nothing's broke yet. So that's that. So now that's the first pass. So we're now on the second pass. 70 to 75 now going around. Turn up the power. Can we see? Yes, we can. Where's 70? There he is. Coming up for 70 newton meters. Locked on at 70. 70 to 75. And then round the houses we go again. Starting there at 1. Clearing the tower a bit better with the extension bar. Clicked. 2 is on the other side. Threes next to one, all looking good. If it's on the live chat, you could have been telling me any improvements I could be making. Because a lot of you will be engine builders out there. And I respect that you are. You know the best way to remember something is to learn it. We don't want to learn and have a costly mistake. I think I have done cylinder heads. No, not think. I have done cylinder heads before. I've never had anything go wrong. I've always done it this way. Nine, ten, last on the corner. Do you know what? I don't think we hit ten before. Whoops. What's that warped head you got there? Yeah, I've got a nice little warped head you got there. Okay, seventy. Wait five minutes for your 90 degree turn. I won't do that to you. You can rest assured that I'm going to give these another 90 degree turn. Then I'm going to make a phone call to the little noob. I'm going to say, Jim, please, please guide me through. Little Newt's my wingman. Lee Holmes the wingman. Andy the lens the wingman. We've got wingmen on all the patrons. Every single patron's a wingman and every single YouTuber is a wingman. So can I call on you all please while I crack up? The hell's he going on about? Right, head a bit more solid, 90 degrees after five minutes. Then we'll have a little look round, see what else we can bolt onto it. Maybe we can start looking at the camshaft, but I did tell you that I'd like to feed it with some oil and, and see it coming out of the galleys. It should dribble out of these uh, holes here and lubricate the cam. We've got some red cam lube also to fit, so we may slide the cam in on the cam lube now and uh, continue on. Okay, I'm going to make some phone calls. It's time to phone a friend and just see for a bit of guidance, a bit of help. Always, always call them for help if you're unsure. Never be shy to ask. 
while we wait for some information to filter through from friends alike, uh, an oil filter, sacrificial one, although it seems a shame sacrificing a frown filler, um, lightly oiled up there on the threads and on the rubber gasket face, skim that in, spin that in a minute. Fram, because Fram were officially suppliers to Ford for the filters. Um, fume crankcase ventilation oil capture box, powder coated slotted in, then a new uh, PCV valve, positive crankcase ventilation, and grommet curiously motorcrafted up from Burton's that. So that's a new PCV and grommet fitted into the refurbished or powder coated catch pot. Oil pressure switch, temporary one for us because we don't use this, we use a feed pipe to a gauge, but just to stop the oil coming out of there. New dipstick again from Burton's, they're always handy. Distributor, <clears throat> that's not the one we're going to use, that's just in to get us some drive into the oil pump. Um, because the head's locked down, we've got to do another 90 degree turn just yet, but we can fill some oil up into this. I'd like to get some oil into it at an early stage, then I can keep my eyes on any any catastrophic leaks. We should be able to put the drill on the end and spin the pump up. The pump, I did load it with some Vaseline, which will break down. That just so that the pump's not running dry initially, but we're gonna very slowly turn the pump in, let it prime up. We should then see some oil come out of the galleys, but I think I'll slide the camshaft in before I do that. Now, I don't think there's any advantage um, putting any of the followers and things on before the camshaft, although you may disagree with me on that, I can't see that the cam's going to get in the way of any, anything else. We haven't got the spray bar on, so the oil's going to come out of the spray bar holes. That's where it should, we should see it, um, and really nowhere else, because the cam's going to be fitted. So effectively speaking, we're just looking for oil coming out of these, uh, what you call the, uh, the, ga the galleys in the cam towers, with the new shells in the cam towers. We can slide the cam in, I think. Um, I don't think not having the ball studs in at this point makes any difference, okay? But I can always check on that. And then we can work on this area before we put the manifold on. It's easy to set the cam timing up and everything while we can get round it at this stage. Yes, fit these items, but that's about it. You could possibly fit the fuel pump, although we do need a, a fuel pump push rod. Down here they have a little rod which is slide in, which goes against the, um, the lobe of the cam inside on the auxiliary. So the auxiliary drives the fuel pump, the distributor, which in turn drives the oil pump. So that auxiliary wheel is driving those three items. There's a push rod that slides inside here, just tilt you down a little bit. And you can get two lengths of push rod. Later on Ford fitted a deeper, a deeper bush uh, washer type thing here, which they use as a heat insulator. It stopped the engine block from heating the fuel pump up, which was causing some uh, fuel starvation problems. So they, they made the washer here, a plastic isolating washer. I'll, I'll bring it on screen for you, just so you can see my fuel pump just off. Here we go. So <clears throat> your engine, if you've got a Pinto, may have a thinner gasket than this one, in which case you'd have a shorter push rod slotted into here. But if you do ever change your fuel pump, and you fit that larger gasket, you've got to put the longer push rod in, otherwise you'll get a lot of rattling noises coming off the end of this because there'll be too much play. Um, conversely, you don't want to fit a pump without it because then the rod's pushing too hard into your fuel pump and you get problems that way as well. So you've got to match the length of the push rod here that slots inside, easy for them to fall out, so be careful with the type of insulator gasket you've got. The thicker one's the better one. Stops the heat build up into the pump. This pump here, a, I don't know what manufacturer it is, but it's in the period, correct to what we want. I mean, it's just, we're not actually going for authenticity as such. We're going for just general something looking clean, correct, not necessarily factory, but within the, the zone of factory. In other words, this pump and this fuel pump motorcraft fitted a slightly different design although i have seen this in the book by the way train spotters yes the alley pump was not and it would be cast spin you around the alley pump would be cast but i like these the lighter weight and uh, it's a shame if you 
because this is going to have power steering it's instantly not concourse anymore it's power steering it's instantly modified but it's not crazily modified if you know what i mean even my distributor will be electronic one but that's a bosch look-alike um, the cam covers and stuff they'll be standard so at the first overall glance it looks like a quite a tidy ford engine and then if you was doing the concourse judging for a, a full original type engine you'd be saying yeah okay you need the cast pump you need fewer things would be changed that's not a problem as long as it's tidy neat and within the spirit of things then i'm happy to go with that so that's a that's a ramble over with we're going to prime up the uh, oil we're going to slide the camshaft in okay some cam loop then this just gets you going when you dry comes with the cam kit plenty on don't be shy with that so that's uh, that's that stuff and then our catch our securing bracket for the end of the cams fitted in just so we didn't lose it at the end here and now be careful now that we're working with screws with the rocker cover off we do not want anything falling down the oil galley so it's ultra careful time because that screw now that I've got here could very easily slip down the galley yeah you could get a magnet and fish it out you don't want to be doing that it's okay with a bracket so it's careful careful time camshaft then coming up gloves and the, the cam loop is on let's just give that a one two round we go round we go round we go it's quite sticky stuff and that's how it works i just hope as i say everything goes to plan so we guide through careful not to hit the shells as he hits every shell on the way through it's amazing how quick you forget i wonder if it's an age thing answers on a postcard for that please do you start as you get older I'm, I'm 40 now <clears throat> I'm forgetting everything at 40 nudge nudge ah we we made a mistake ladies and gentlemen we made a mistake it's okay it can be done on the fly we need to grease up oil the bearing end uh, the seal at the end is a rubber seal you can just see it on, on your screen on, on the left of your screen you can just see this just helps it from chafing chafing chaffing 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 and then we've got to get that to go through now you can only feed in one way tell me if i'm wrong here you can only go in this way so it seems to be there we go oh that's, that just feels good it just it just feels good securing plate on at the end we need to check what torque these little phillips screws curious why they use these little grub screw type things at the end here very similar to the ones you have that hold your uh, striker plates on your doors but it's just a slight difference on them um, they don't have the little flat not flat bit but non threaded part at the beginning these just the straight threads as I look to try and see the, the uh, there we go now remember we don't want to drop anything down the galley the proper correct fitting screwdriver will be in a little spanner I'm just tightening these up with no torque torque reference for these we need to go and dig that out don't forget that everything that i've put on with the exception of the cylinder head will be labeled up to be retorked and checked you know, we put some little tie tie parcel tie labels tags paddington bear type tags on later telling us to check torque settings on all bolts okay so there on and then a spanner just to lift these up we're going to do it by hand not sure what my snap on spanner needs it looks like it needs 12 no 11 it needs okay so i'm a decent screwdriver in this case we've got a snap on one and then i'm just going to bring that up just to get extra torque till i feel it's something like because this would be a disaster if these came out so we're going to do some research tonight i'm going to ask around on some forums how do you tighten up the end screws do you just go by hand 
and they feel good to me. Cam locked in there. Nothing else to do to that. We can check that the oil's pumping through the engine, and then at least we will lubricate a little bit. For now, we've got the cam lube hold, holding us till the oil reaches. Obviously, that's not designed for a long run. It's simply just to get you bedded in. As soon as we connect the spray bar, the oil will pressurise into the towers, and we'll get oil coming up. But we're going to put the drill. On the front of the sprocket, I'll take you around to the side, and then the auxiliary sprocket should draw the oil up. So, other than doing our 90 degree turn, we're about to do that now. The time has elapsed for the 90 degree turn, so we're going to just do our final torque settings on the head bolt. Then, we're going to pour some oil down. The galley oil galley is at the end here. We can pour in with a funnel and just load this up. We'll just put in a few litres for now. Uh, check on the dipstick where we're up to. Screw the oil filter up. All the filters on this side screwed up. Nothing to stop it. We can see if anything's obviously gone wrong with our gasket on the sump. We're going to know if we're holding oil. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way. And at least the engine's then got some oil going on in, in it. Leave that with me now. We're going to top up. I'll bring you around so you can see if we could indeed get the oil pumping through. Now, as far as I know, there's no reason why. I've got to flip this engine at any time and obviously you know you're putting oil in it you're going to say well hold on a minute you know this is clean by the way you put an end you put an oil in it what's going on you've still not finished building your engine um well you could always drain it out again do we need a funnel We'll only take it, it'll only take it so much. It's a slow process. <clears throat> There's no, no, any other way of filling it up. I'm leaning down to see if you can actually see it. I think you can. Not a lot else I can do. It's going. If you put it straight over the galley, you can actually get it in full flow, actually. To be fair. Yeah, you can get it in full flow. And we know how much it's half, two and a half litres at first. It's enough to hit the pickup pipe. little bit of the silver foil just getting in the way on the end of the um, oil can. It's always, you, know, you feel like you're getting somewhere, you start putting your oil in. I just didn't like the engine being dry for so long as well, especially as I'm going to start turning it over soon. You know, as soon as I turn it over, I'm turning it over dry. I'm be really careful. I want to get oil flowing. It'd be so tempting, you know. You, you're going to be bolted on, on the crank pulley and stuff. And then, how do I know I'm not going to be rotating the crank a little bit? And if it's dry, well, I mean, I'm not saying the oil is going to get everywhere at first before I do turn that crank. Again, I'll be researching tonight. Suffice to say, again, I've built an engine up. Mind you, the newt was helping me. Who's the newt? It's the newtster. Well, Jimbo. He's out there. Don't forget to keep in touch, little newt. Not bad lad. He's a bad lad. Right. That is that. We are filled up with oil. Has it hit the dipstick yet? How quick? Does it get down? Down and dirty. Yep, we're in. We're on the dipstick already. So, two and a half litres in. Obviously it takes more. But, slowly, my hand is now on the pump, on the auxiliary drive. I'm going to slowly turn that. 
by hand at first. I'm going to bring you in. We'll see what we get. So we'll get the drill out. Get the adapter for the drill. Drill coming up off screen. You're going to move now back down to ground level. Hold on, there you go. Are you ready? Okay, I had to make a little adapter. I've lost my reducer somewhere. It's disappeared. I've got a two-stage reducer just to get to 17 from the drill, but 17 onto the end of the sprocket, just there, and then slowly bring it in. I turned it by hand a little bit. In theory, now we should get oil eventually. Whoa! <laughs> Oops! Whoops! <laughs> Kicked out of there, all right. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Whoops! Now then, is that because my spray bar's not on? Yeah, it is. Because the spray bar's not on. So we're gonna cap that, put the spray bar on, and we'll do it with the spray bar. It just went boom. Okay, spray bar. This is a new old stock spray bar. They do say enlarge the holes. Also, this spray bar is missing, I believe, a little rubber <coughs> O-ring which would sit on this. I think it's got a little rubber ring that sits on the end there. But don't worry, this is just for now. I'm not going with this completely. I'm just nipping it up by hand just to see what we get. Okay, so I'm just get a spanner and uh, tighten these up. Tens what we need. Tens on the bench. Tens on the bench. Tens what we need. But I don't think it will seal. It might do. I'm sure it has a little rubber inlay. We'll find out soon. Right, so, not that it really matters on the camshaft because that's not turning, but we should get something you can come in. Yeah, we're on. Here we go, right, I'll bring you in so you can see. Oil's now reached the parts that others can't, but my my adapter's now failed. Where that adapter's gone, I do not know. So I'll just hooked up a temporary adapter off screen for you. Basically, taped taped it on the end of the drill. <laughs> Got to improvise sometimes. Talking out. There we go, as it builds up the pressure. Plenty of pressure there. So we know we're through. Oil is present in the engine and now leave that overnight. We'll see if we spot any leaks in the sump. I don't think we will, of course, until that engine really turns over. You're never going to know for sure, but at least we're sort of primed and a little bit of oil flowing around the network okay next job will be to set up the camshaft of course we'll double check this little and maybe a little o-ring seal in there we'll, we shall check that but i'm gonna have some tea it's the end of another day see you back see you back back do, do, do backwards see you about the same time tomorrow